Hey, what's up guys? I'm Zed for me and today what we're going to be finally doing is um, getting the electric conversion of my go-kart um, started. So what I have actually out, laid out here on the table is pretty much all the parts that I need in order to get started um, with this project. Um, and so what I'm going to do is show you around um, all the components um, that are going to be part of this uh, electric go-kart and I'll talk about why I chose these specific components um, and I'll try and give you guys a little bit of a background in terms of um, how everything uh, works um, because this is obviously very different than a gasoline um, engine that you can use like the Predator 212 and so everything here I specifically picked out and it took me quite a bit of time um, in order to pick out these components so um, I chose these components for a reason and I want to explain to you guys basically how to fit everything together um, I can't go into depth in terms of just like everything about uh, about electric go-karts because there's just so much to learn um, or I mean electric uh, uh, systems in general because there's just so much to learn um, however I can give you like a general basic idea of how things are put together um, so first uh, let me show you guys around my table right here so essentially when it comes to electric you really got to think about uh, a lot of different components and how well they'll work together it's not like a gasoline engine where you know you just put fuel in it 87 octane fuel fill it up and then uh, you run the engine in order to replace the actual engine there's like multiple components as you see here um, and even more components if you want to make something that will be even more reliable um, as well as safer if that's something that you're very interested in. So um, let me just quickly run down the parts that we have here. This over here is um, the charger for the batteries. This, all these, these packs, these are all um, RC LiPo batteries. And um, for those of you who actually have an idea of um, anything to do with electric, you know that these RC batteries, these LiPo batteries, are very powerful, but at the same time, they have to be treated properly um, or else you could get in a lot of danger. These are the types of batteries that you'll see on certain people's videos, on YouTube especially, where they just kind of go up in flames. Um, and you know there's a big reason for that it's because they're able to handle such a high current load um, that they also if you don't treat them properly can um, end up causing you a lot of trouble so charger these are the batteries I'll talk more about that in a little bit um, this here is the controller that I decided to use and this is a Savoton controller I got this from LAE bikes and um, I appreciate their help because you know they gave me a lot of information regarding this controller and whether or not it would be right for my particular application so this guy right here um, is basically the main part I guess you could say that will replace your um, gas engine this here is a motor from Mode Energy and essentially this is a very powerful electric replacement um, for your gasoline engine. The exact model number is super long so I'll just put it up on the screen for you right now so if you want to check out this motor you can. But basically this here is going to be able to handle about 6 horsepower continuous and 19 horsepower peak. What does that translate to when it comes to our build? It basically translates to a go-kart that will be able to handle the top speed of our of the go-kart that we're replacing. 19 horsepower peak and 6 horsepower continuous is a rating of what it's capable of. Um, however, the actual amount of power that you're going to get is simply controlled by your controller. So if I had a really, really weak controller, I wouldn't be able to power this to its full potential. Same thing with my batteries. It's kind of like 87 octane fuel versus 93. The batteries, if they can deliver the juice that the motor needs, that the controller needs, then you're going to be able to uh, crank up the power. If your batteries are weak right at the start, it's not going to be able to power what the controller asks for and what the motor is going to ask for as well. The final two pieces that you need um, one is obviously a sprocket. This here is a sprocket. I believe it's, yep, it's 22 teeth. And this will work with the 35 chain that's currently on the go-kart already. This here is our um, throttle. And it's just a simple foot throttle. Not many bells and whistles to it. But basically, other than the wiring that you need to connect this all together, that's really all you need. So why did I pick out these specific parts? 
So these here are Turnigy hard case packs. Um, each one of them is four cell and it contains five amp hours each. So for my build, what I'm doing is um, 10 of these packs for 20 S, which means that there will be 20 cells in series as well as 2P, which means that there's going to be, instead of 5 amp hours, you multiply that by 2 and you'll have 10 amp hours. And I'm going to try and make this as easy to understand for people who don't know anything about electric propulsion systems. And if you want more information, I highly recommend you to go to a website called endless-sphereforums.net. So Endless Sphere Forums is a place where you can get all the information you can need from starting to build a very simple uh, electric drive system all the way to doing cars and boats, go-karts, motorcycles. I've learned so much from that website and I've been on it since around 2009 from my very first electric bicycle to what I'm doing today. So if you take a look at my charger here, it is a lithium ion polymer charger. Um, and as you can see here, it's an 84 volt charger with four amps. So essentially, if this is a five amp hour battery and this is four amps, it takes just over an hour to fully charge this battery. Because my setup will be 2P, which is 10 amp hours, five and five, this will take approximately two and a half hours to charge a fully depleted battery. And when it comes to batteries, it's really not like um, fuel counterparts where you could just run your engine all the way till there was no fuel. Um, with electric, you guys know Teslas are really popular now. And actually, you know, they weren't popular at all in 2009 when I first started um, building electric bikes. However, for those of you who know anything about electric cars, you really don't want to run them down to 0% battery life. And you always want to keep it around 50% for storage. Um, and then charge it up at when you need to go and then use it um, and not let the battery sit at full charge. Basically, these are very powerful versions of the cell phone batteries that you have. So the way that you would treat your cell phone battery, you'd want to treat these as well. You don't want to run your cell phone battery down to zero and you don't want to leave it fully charged forever either. So these packs are um, 20C discharge packs. And essentially what that means is that they can put out 20 times their size in terms of current. So this is a five amp hour pack. It has 20 C discharge, which technically means that this here can put out 100 amps. You really don't wanna run these batteries at their full rating um, because it'll heat up the pack and the batteries will degrade faster. So that's also part of the reason why I'm putting these two together. And with 10 amp hours, I'm gonna be running these at really half their rated discharge. So the goal for this build is gonna be to break 10,000 watts. 10,000 watts is gonna be a lot of fun and this controller here is able to handle 12,000 watts. And so once I have everything tuned out, uh, I'll be starting at like probably two or 3,000 watts just to make sure everything runs well together. And then I'll just bump this up all the way to 12,000 watts. And obviously that should be a big blast. So talking a little bit more about this controller, I really like this controller. It's very hefty compared to a lot of the other controllers that I've had. The terminals here are very easy to use and I really like how everything is all laid out here um, as well as the ability to connect this to your computer and to program it. So that's a really big uh, important feature that I think everybody or every controller at least should have. Um, I didn't talk about this yet, this basically is a balancer. It'll balance the cells inside each of these battery packs. So you want all the cells here to be at the exact same voltage, and this balancer will allow you to do that. Okay, so now we come to our motor. This here is a three-phase brushless motor. And like I said before, it's able to handle six horsepower and 19 horsepower peak. However, I'm not gonna be running it at its full rating simply because um, number one, this controller cannot give 19 horsepower peak. The conversion between horsepower and watts is very simple because I'm doing a 12,000 watt build. Every 750 watts is a horsepower. So if you do the math, there's actually not enough juice in this controller to run this thing at 19 horsepower. That and along with the fact that I really don't wanna stress my batteries more than I need to. If I had double the amount of batteries here, then I could certainly have gotten an even bigger controller which will run this motor at its full rating. However, I decided not to run this motor at its full rating simply because I don't wanna overheat this motor. 
And I know that what this controller is capable of already is gonna be more than enough for me to have a lot of fun. I always have the ability to upgrade in the future. Um, the good thing about electric components is that you can upgrade each individual component until you build a system that's really strong. So with a gasoline engine, this would be analogous to perhaps um, switching jets on your carburetor or doing rods, things like that, um, which will actually make your engine um, run more powerful. That's what switching out each individual component can do for you um, on an electric drive system. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna try and hook up everything together and I wanna at least prove to myself that I can get this um, motor to run. So what I'm gonna do is get my laptop, get ready to program this controller and just do a very simple um, connection of all of these things together. I would show you the entire process of hooking things up together. Um, however, it's really tedious and um, I'm not sure if it'll take me a long time to hook everything together or if it'll take me a short time. But like I said, if you're really interested in learning more about this stuff, go on endlessphereforums.net and there's a lot of information about what like all these plugs do. It's simply a chore when it comes to putting the controller uh, and matching up the uh, colors here for the phase wires to the colors um, on the motor. When you start mixing and matching, not everything is gonna be color coordinated. So that's something that is definitely gonna require a little bit of time. Sometimes you might get it right on the first try, sometimes you might not. However, this controller is really good because um, with the hall monitors, um, and again, if you don't know what that is, check out endlesssphereforums.net. With the hall monitors, it can actually match it for you. Um, and so that'll definitely save me a bit of time. However, it is my first time using the Savoton controller. So when I get my laptop to program everything, uh, I'm gonna let you guys know in terms of review how easy it was or how hard it was to actually get everything here hooked up together. So I'll be back in just a few. So for now, I've actually got everything connected um, and it's currently running the hall angle test. So as you could see, this motor is running very slowly and it's just checking to make sure that everything is um, connected up properly. Um, I'm still currently working through a couple of issues right now, mainly with the throttle. I can't seem to get it to work where it'll um, uh, control it smoothly. Um, I did have a little bit of a mishap where this went to full throttle um, by accident. So as you can see, that's all done now. And if you just move this window over, you can see that the test was okay which means that um, this hall angle combination that I used was um, correct. So now what I have to do is switch this to normal run and disable the hall angle test and just press OK. But I do have to make sure that um, it's not going to run away. All right. So, so far, so good. Um, now with my throttle, I'm having a couple of issues with the throttle minimum and maximum voltage as well as the middle volts. Um, I'm gonna look more into it and uh, when I get that done, um, it should be good to go. All right, so it seems like everything's set up now. I am using these really thin wires right now for the phases, um, but obviously this will get switched over to really thick phase wires, probably those over there, the um, six gauge. I'll try and go with thicker if I can, um, but just to kind of show you, um, this is the throttle. And right now it's really sensitive. I'm sure I can um, kind of fix that, um, but just take a look at the motor as well as the um, throttle playing together. I have to do this very slowly because the motor is very torquey. So unfortunately because I don't have uh, three hands I can't hold on to the motor and show you but I'll just do it very slowly. Alright so obviously as you can see I barely moved the throttle. Um, so I definitely have to work it out so that I can get the full range of the throttle to match up with the full range of the motor. Um, right now it is obviously very, very sensitive, but, but uh, this is really good. Didn't take me too long to get everything figured out. This Savoton controller is very uh, awesome. I really like it so far in terms of the way that you can um, just actually uh, mess with all the settings on a computer and just uh, download it into the controller. Uh, I think that's a really awesome feature. Um, another thing that I came into trouble with was that when I had everything plugged in, it had a issue with the motor being um, over the temperature cutoff. Um, and so all you have to do is connect the um, temperature wire um, to the ground. And when you do that, um, it'll set the motor temperature to like negative 55 degrees Celsius. Um, so it'll obviously never be over the um, temperature cutoff. 
And so when I actually do get everything set up, I'm definitely gonna be uh, using a temperature sensor to make sure this motor never gets too hot. Other than that, I think that's it for this episode. In the next episode, what we're gonna start is doing the permanent wiring for everything, um, as well as mounting everything onto the go-kart, which is already gonna be a hassle in itself. Currently, in terms of spacing, I have to think about where I'm gonna put all these components. Obviously, all these components definitely take up more space than the gas engine right now. Uh, I'm thinking about mounting my batteries um, onto the uh, skid plate um, and the controller I'm thinking about putting right where the gas engine was and then building a bracket which kind of extends vertically and mounting the motor there. Um, the only issue I have with that is probably that the uh, motor will be sitting up higher than I want it to. However, I really don't know if there's any other place I could put that um, controller. I'm trying to keep all the um, thick wires as short as possible so that there's less losses in terms of the uh, resistance in the wires. Um, but that'll be for the next episode. As always, thank you guys for watching. Please check out the other videos that I've had in this series so far if you haven't already. Um, and I'll be sure to catch you in the next one for more go-karting fun.